Hey guys, I'm back. It's Nia. All right, so let's take a time travel trip to like the 20s, I guess, let's say. Um, where it's pretty much like the beginning or towards the beginning um, of like the silent movie era. Um, I know it started in the teens, you know, 19 teens. But 20s, they were, you know, on a roll, I guess, let's say. So, a way for theaters back then, or their art houses, or wherever they showed the movies, um, a way for them to advertise what's showing, either coming soon or now showing, is simply a movie poster. So... Of course, their movie posters back then is totally different than the movie posters of today. Posters then were like painted and then maybe copied them I and there weren't like, you know, mass copied and sent off to every theater in the country like today. They probably had just one or several. It's not like it was just mass production, as I said. So, uh,. So their artwork was really artwork for their posters. As of today, you know, there's pictures or it's done digital or it's just, you know, it's um, it's not like it's less artistic. It was just, it's just, it's easier with the technology that we have today versus like in the 20s when they most likely, if you see, you know, look at some of the posters back then, they were literally either drawn or painted and then maybe kind of copied or something to make, to be a movie poster. So I found a list of the 15 greatest movie posters of all time. Most of them I agree with, but there is this, you know, this one, you know, there's always going to be this one that you're going to have a, a fit over that should not be on there and I don't understand why it's on there and it's just by looking at the poster and the thing is the poster that they say is like in the top 15 isn't you know it's like posters of today and or or as of like 80s 90s and on they have multiple posters in the 20s and, and maybe a little later, you know, they only had one. Now, movies have multiple posters. They got teasers and then other posters, you know, they have like a whole line of just movie posters. Then they had, you know, say just one, two, if that. So, uh, <laughs> so movie posters, you know, to me, are pretty much the oldest form of advertisement for movies that are either coming or now showing, um, theater I worked, uh, we had 10 posters inside and 10 poster cases outside. The outside one, of course, was, um, you know, the now showing. Or, you know, if we had multiple movies in, in multiple theaters and it had maybe eight movies and so that left like maybe two poster cases open, we would either put like an extra poster of that same movie if we had it or put a coming soon movie. But the movie posters inside a theater, coming soon movies. Very rarely would you see an hour showing unless we just had an extra poster case, an extra poster that didn't, whatever, just to fill it. But anyway, so, um... Some of these posters, uh, I'm going to go kind of quick through, and then some I'm not. But the 15, of course, I'm going to start off from the bottom and then go to the top as the number one, which number one is like the most iconic movie poster ever made. All you have to do is look at it once, and then you know what it looks like for the rest of your life. So that is the number one movie poster. Do you know what it is? Guess what it is before I get to it. Because I'm not going to give any hints. Um, so, the, 
that number 15 is a John Carpenter movie, and I believe it was on a list of the 80s movies that didn't perform well at the box office, but it's a very good film, and that would be John Carpenter's 1982's The Thing. If you look at the poster, it's really cool. It really is, and of course, through the years, since this year, 2022, marks the 40th anniversary been out there been out 40 years y'all so you know with dvd covers uh they come out with different covers kind of like different posters for the movie so what i did what i tried to do was uh if they had a designer which i don't know anything about the designer but uh or the designers of some of these but the designer of the thing is drew uh struzan he also, um, if you've seen these movies or seen these posters, you know his other works. Blade Runner, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, Indiana Jones, uh, all of the Indiana Jones, and the Star Wars movies. So, he's done some really good posters for some really good films, <laughs> looks like. But yeah, you know, um, I'm trying to put, you know, over here on this side, hopefully, that uh, the poster of the thing and the other posters I'm talking about, the top 15 over here on my side. So, um, if you look at it, you know, you just see a glowing light from the mask and it just, it looks just, to me, it looks really cool and definitely a movie I would want to see. And I have seen it multiple times, I own it, so it's, to me, it's just a great movie. Best ending ever. Because there is no ending. It leaves it up to you, the viewer, how it ends. So number 14 is really a basic poster, but it is a, a great one. It's a movie that came out in 1993, directed by Steven Spielberg. It became a massive hit. I mean a massive hit. Jurassic Park. Plain and simple. You see Dinosaur Head in the center and Jurassic Park. I mean, it pretty much, it's self-explanatory with just minimal uh, imagery on, on the poster. So it totally, completely works. Thirteen. Um, yeah, this one, this is a good one. This one, some posters you really got to look at. You know, really take a, a, a minute and look at the poster. And not just glance at it. Just really take a, a look at it. And this is one you have to take a look at. And there's one definitely on here you got to take a look at because I still don't get something. But anyway, um, 1973's William Friedkin's The Exorcist. Designer was Bill Gold. I mean, you see the light shining from the bedroom down to the street where you see Father, what, Marisk? Uh, Maris uh, coming out of the cab. So that is just right there. I I'm getting chills. Just just that little imagery right there. Because that's just, it's a scary movie. It still holds up today. The movie itself really isn't scary. It's kind of like, if you think about it, afterwards, that's what kind of makes it scary. Okay, this one right here. This one, y'all, this is the one I'm having to fit over. This is the most recent movie, poster and movie, uh, that's on the list. And it came out like in 2000 something. But, uh, I just, I don't understand why this poster is on this list. There's other posters of this movie, but this poster, I just, I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know why. I just don't get it. But anyway, um, <sighs> um, <laughs> it's the social network. Yeah, it's about Mr. Facebook himself, Mark Zuckerberg, but the poster is just so boring. Why would it be considered one of the greatest? I mean, look at it. It's, <laughs> why? Why is this poster on this list? Anyway, it was designed by Neil Kellerhouse, who also did Gone Girl in Mindhunter. Uh, Gone Girl was a, a neat poster. I mean, there's a lot of really cool posters out there, and some of these do deserve to be on this list, and some of these don't. And the social network? Really? Why? 
I'm still trying to understand this one. I'm, you know, there's always got to be this, as I said, this one, either one movie, one poster, one something that should not be on this list, and they put it on there. I really got to, you know, come up with, like, my own list. You know how hard that may be? I'll work on it, but it may be a while. Number 11 is Chinatown. It was designed by Jim uh, Pearsall, who <clears throat> um, really um, he inspired this, as you see, thing about the 1890s billboards for uh, job cigarettes. That's how it was inspired by, you know, the rolling papers and stuff. So the movie's great. I've seen it and great cast. And the poster is really cool looking. I like it. This one right here, the next one, um, designed again by Drew uh, Strizan, who did the thing. And number 10 is Back to the Future. You really gotta take a look at Back to the Future. It's one of those posters. Uh, look at it. Just take a good close look at it and uh, let's see everything. Because it's. Um, the website I got this stuff off of, uh, I think it was what what's nerd.com or something. And uh, so you can read the article. And I try to put little notes of extra things I can say about these posters. Other than that, I've kind of, if you know, I've seen the poster. So <laughs> back, to the, back to the future. Number nine, Al Pacino in Scarface. Half of it's in black, half of it's in white. It's got the wording. It's, you know, it kind of tells you a little about what the, the, the movie is about right there on the poster. Some posters do that. Some posters are just a picture. But um, this one is it's fine, I guess. I mean, it's, it's one of the best movies out there. So it's no surprise there about having... Uh, having the poster on, on the greatest list. Um, at number eight is the only silent movie movie poster ever. And as I understand, if you come across the original poster, not any reprints, but the original, it's like the holy grail of movie posters. And, you know, it, it's the German silent film and it's considered one of the best science fiction movies ever made. I have started watching this movie multiple times. I own it, but I keep falling asleep. It's a long movie, long silent movie, but I will watch it. It's called I Am... I'll get it. Don't worry. I'll conquer it. I am persistent. But um, the designer is, I'm going to so, so slaughter this name because it's German. And most of the silent movies I like are German. But let's see, the designer of Metropolis is Heinz Schultz Newdom. Hopefully I said his name right. If not, oh, please forgive me because, you know, you know he's not. Shouldn't still be around. The movie came out like almost 100 years ago. But anyway, <laughs> Metropolis, I think I saw somewhere on a website or maybe on Facebook that the uh, picture of the robot, woman robot on, of the movie, um, and on the poster that there's actually a statue of it not that far from Berlin and it's pointing, I think, you know, to, to, with the, the right hand. <laughs> that way. And, um... So, so it, it's definitely a movie that means a lot to Germany. Number seven. Here's a poster that I gotta kind of re-look into. Like, you really, seriously, f look at this picture, the poster, and you gotta zoom in. Because I gotta zoom in, and I still kind of can't see it. But, anyway. Um, designed by Don Bailey. Um... At number seven, The Silence of the Lambs. And apparently, like, inside the moth, if you zoom in, there's supposed to be, like, seven victims. You can see, like, seven bodies seven for seven victims. And I'm 
okay? Because they have kind of like hidden images in movie posters. So that's why sometimes if they have like a lot going on, take a good look at it because it kind of can give you hints about some things that happen in the movie or never know. It could be Easter eggs for other things. Still. Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, just look at the moth. <laughs> and number six, uh, designed by Saul Bass, who also designed some other Hitchcock movies, Anatomy of a Murder. Um, he's also known for doing some title sequences to the movies, like uh, The Man with the Golden Arm, North by Northwest, Psycho, so I think he worked with Hitchcock quite a bit, because... So far, I think all those are Hitchcock. The logos, he's also known for doing logos for Hanna-Barbera, Hanna-Barbera, and AT&T. Woo! AT&T. Anyway, um, he also did the poster for Vertigo. So you got Anatomy of Murder, which you see, and then Vertigo. Ta-da! So you got two Hitchcock movies back-to-back -back being... Six, and at number five was Vertigo. Designed by the same guy, Saul Bass. Number four. Uh, Ridley Scott film. Came out in 1979. Alien. I mean, it is simple, and it's really cool, and it's just, you see this... What, I think I remember, uh, an egg, and it, it's like cracking or something. It, it's just, like, just the edge, just look. Right there, just that simple, sometimes it just, the less you show, the more it is. And it, it works for this, just like Jurassic Park. Alien. Three, uh, um, this is one I can go either way. I mean, I would replace it. I don't think I would put it on my top list. But, you know, I've seen the movie, and it's... People tend to like it. I'm one of those few that I just don't really care for it, but Pulp Fiction. Uh, designed by James uh, Verze uh, let's see, Verdesado. But, you know, Uma Thurman, I think, laying on the bed with cigarettes and stuff, so... It's kind of simple, but it also kind of tells you what type of movie you're getting yourself into when you see it. I mean, it's not a bad movie. It, it was a comeback movie, definitely, for John Travolta. If you like that man, I know some people who don't. Mm -hmm. Anyway, number two, the top two. Did you guess what number one poster is yet? <laughs> number two, and I'm talking about this is the original... There, there, this is one movie that had multiple posters, but this right here is about the original poster that was actually, like, was artwork. It wasn't pictured or anything. It did come out in 1977, but it was the original poster that had some art to it, <laughs> not just, ch ching 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 picture. Um... By Tom Jung, who also did posters for Dr. Javago and Plan 9 from Outer Space. I'm talking about the original poster uh, for Star Wars. A Good Hope, of course. 1977. <clears throat> um, so, this right here. I should have... The original poster right here. Who loves Star Wars? Raise your right hand. Left hand. Simon says left, right, okay. Um, Star Wars. You take a look at it and you see the characters from the movie on it. And I believe some of the, the ships and other characters. But just, you know... This is the original versus some other ones that I've seen. Um, but this is the one that they say is uh, the second greatest movie poster of all time. Y'all ready for number one? Mm -hmm. Number one.
Scream out the ones that you think. Who's number one? Come on. You know it. 1975 movie. Uh, actually, the poster is based off the cover from, um, from the novel. And it was designed by Roger Castell. And the movie is Steven Spielberg's 1975 Jaws. That is the most iconic movie poster ever. That is the number one greatest movie poster ever. All you have to do is just... You see it once and you know what it looks like forever. Because it is just... It's simple and it's kind of freaky, but... But, there's a but here. I follow this site on Facebook where it has uh, alternative movie posters. That's what it's called. And they have alternative movie poster for Jaws, which makes it even freakier than the original. Now, part two, Jaws 2, looks pretty much similar to the same. I believe. <clears throat> the shark coming from underneath, you know. But, yeah, it's just, it, it's Jaws. Uh, number one. Uh, what can I say? That's, that's like, um, two Spielberg movies right there. That's on the list. Uh, Ridley Scott, Jonathan Demme, John Carpenter. Um, <clears throat> Zemeckis, I believe. Uh, so anyway, so... Movie posters, and I don't know what really interests you uh, when you see a movie poster. Say, so, hey, I want to see that, or hey, mm, no. It really just depends on what it looks like, the, the imagery sometimes. Um, you know, like, uh, I think a simple movie poster that comes to mind was back in 1992 for Aladdin. It's teaser uh poster which you know that's what sometimes they call just something that's really simple it just had like a genie lamp and it had aladdin and it had the date and actually uh, there is a a poster where it says it's gonna that shows coming out in may they that movie did not come out in may it came out in november because it came out the same day as the bodyguard because i was there <laughs> i was at the theater working when that those two movies came out both movies very popular anyway so, uh, yeah, you know, I have, like, the whole set, I believe, the whole set of the Saint posters. There's four. There's, like, one gold and one silver, like, lightning strike. And then there's actually two posters of, you know, one with a big uh, close-up of Val Kilmer's face. And then another one with uh, Val and, and Elizabeth Shue running around in Moscow <coughs> with the opera house in the background. I believe that is what that building is really cool really beautiful building but anyway um other than that you know uh there's other posters that I, I realized last night of like the movie titanic and there's one poster that i did not see that i own i own i think the movie poster and i think i own the uh teaser or the the poster that shows it's coming out during the summer versus it's a uh, december release when it was when it did come out so, and that's, you know, the big letters of Titanic. It looks like the side of the ship, and it just says Titanic going up like that. <clears throat> so, I have that poster, I think. I got a lot of 90s posters, because that's when I worked in the theater. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of posters out there that I think could probably replace some of these that's on this list of being the greatest. But the difference between teaser and movie poster is like when it has all that st the stuff on the bottom of the poster of what studios putting out, who directed it, who's in it, the music by produced, directed all the other like the credits. That's like the poster, movie poster. The teaser has just like like with the Latin, uh, with the lamp, uh, the title, and then like coming soon, and that's about it. Just the basic. So um, air. Bare basic. Anyway, so those are the gr 15 greatest movie posters. Uh, the Thing, Jurassic Park, The Exorcist, <sighs> The Social Network, Chinatown, Back to the Future, Scarface, Metropolis, Silence of the Lambs, Anatomy of a Murder, Vertigo, Alien, Pulp Fiction, Star Wars, and then Jaws. 
check out uh, alternative movie posters if you want to see some really cool posters because I have been like, ooh, I've been saving that on my phone. I'm like, ooh, I like this poster. I like this poster. I like this poster. It's like, this is better than the original. It's like today's, uh, today's like fan art or whatever. They're like, they really got it. They got it together. I love it. So, anyway, hey, thanks for uh, joining in this week. Sorry for the past few weeks. Things been going on. But anyway, I'm back. So, uh, and sorry, no cameo from a cat because they're asleep. It's their nap time. Uh, well, until next time, y'all behave yourselves, be nice to one another, and uh, smile. <laughs> Bye.